In this video, we are going to talk about top 10 film noir, so before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for the future updates. Here's a list of the top 10 film noir, let's start. Number 10. Double Indemnity. First class names helm this indisputable classic. Raymond Chandler and Billy Wilder pen a screenplay based on a novel by James M. Cain, starring Fred McMurray, who never falls into cliché land thanks to his comedic background, Barbara Stanwyck in the best role of her career, and Edward G. Robinson, who is flawless as usual. To top it off, an outstanding score by Miklos Rasha. The film came out in a crucial year for film noir, along with other classics such as Laura or The Woman in the Window. Its plot would be subject to multiple rehashes, a femme fatale convinces an unaware insurance salesman to kill her husband, and its long flashback structure is delightful. Its visuals, drawing from German expressionism and the crude crime news of the time, helped shape a style. Number 9. The Departed. Starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon, and Jack Nicholson, the film focuses on two parallel stories of undercover cops, on one hand, rookie trooper Billy DiCaprio, who infiltrates the heart of the Irish mob in Boston, under dangerous boss Frank Costello, Nicholson, and on the other, Colin Damon, a young spy inside the Massachusetts State Police, where he has been planted by Costello himself. The film's vibrant pace makes its two-and-a-half-hour runtime go by in the blink of an eye. Fifteen years after remaking Cape Fear and a decade before giving Chinmaku the same treatment with his silence, Martin Scorsese imported from Hong Kong this 21st century epic, featuring fast editing techniques and world-class performances, that ranks among Scorsese's best gangster titles. Number 8. Out of the Past. No one ever smoked and brooded and loomed like Robert Mitchum. And he never did it as definitively as he does in Out of the Past, a stylish and devastating noir that was one of a hat-trick of perfect genre pieces directed by Jacques Turner in the 1940s, along with Cat People and I Walk with a Zombie. Viewers not enamored of the actor's somnambulant manner might take the latter title for a description of what it must be like to act alongside Mitchum. But that would be to miss the bitter, internalized hurt and wounded hope he brings to his performance here, just because he's still, that doesn't mean he's not suffering. Number 7. Vertigo. James Stewart plays Scotty Ferguson, a San Francisco detective that suffers from a fear of heights. Gavin Elster, played by Tom Helmore, an old friend from school, hires him for an apparently simple case, to watch over his wife Madeline, Kim Novak, a beautiful woman who was obsessed with her past. Despite less than favorable reviews and box office numbers upon release, this Hitchcock thriller still holds up today, due to its beauty, its mystery, and its obsessive attention to detail. The camera, like a fly on the wall, manages to capture the magic in James Stewart's gestures, Kim Novak's lips, and Barbara Bell Getty's tears. Number 6. Touch of Evil. In the novel Badge of Evil by Whit Masterson, the source material for this movie, the hero is an American man who has been married to a Mexican woman for nine years. It was Orson Welles who flipped the racial mix and made the marriage brand new. Welles intended a story of three frontiers, the rancid Mexican-American border, the way a good detective becomes a bad cop, and a provocation on interracial sexuality. To be sure, it's a recognizable Charlton Heston in makeup as Mike Vargas, with Janet Leigh as Susie, but in 1958, that bond disturbed a lot of viewers. Moreover, the overtone of Honeymoon is a wicked setup for threats of rape. Will the horrendous border scum get to Susie before Mike? If you doubt that suggestiveness, just notice how the car bomb explodes as the honeymooners are ready to enjoy their first kiss on US soil. This is a crime picture in which coitus interruptus has to be listed with all the other charges. Number 5. The Third Man. The best of the Carol Reed slash Graham Greene collaborations deserves to appear on this list due to its brilliant mise scene. In 1947, a writer arrives in Vienna seeking his friend, but the latter has died hit by a car. According to the police, two men stepped in to help, but a witness speaks of a third one. Green adapts his own novella and pulls the right strings to respect its spirit. The oppressive atmosphere of post-war Vienna, shot by Robert Krasker with great expressionist influence, provides a surreal touch to the film. While less sordid than other noir masterpieces, the nihilistic tone, as well as themes of unresolved sexual tension and betrayal are present here. The icing on the cake is the excellent performances by Joseph Cotton and a supporting Orson Welles. Number 4. 
Chinatown. The near perfection of Roman Polanski's Chinatown starts with Diener slash Hauser slash Bates's haunting Art Nouveau poster for the film, an emblematic Hokusai wave breaks against Jack Nicholson's silhouette as the smoke from his cigarette floats up to merge with Faye Dunaway's Medusa-like hair. The movie ends equally unforgettably with the line, forget it Jake, it's Chinatown, as lapidary a payoff as Scarlett O'Hara's, after all, tomorrow is another day. Behind the angst-ridden noirs of the 40s and 50s lie the social and political tensions of the Second World War and the post-war decade. Similarly, Chinatown was conceived, written, produced and released in the troubled period that included the last years of the Vietnam War, Watergate, and Nixon's fraught second term in the White House. Number 3. Fargo. In this indisputable classic, Frances McDormand plays police chief Marge Gunderson, who must solve a crime derived from a staged kidnapping that didn't go as planned. This instantly iconic character, seven months pregnant, follows a trail of violence across snowy Minnesota landscapes with charming joy and an offbeat sense of humor. However, what many people don't know is that much of that snow, which becomes a character itself, was artificial since outdoor shoots in the US and Canada suffered that winter from temperatures higher than usual. Number 2. The Big Sleep. The big sleep of the title is of course death, but the action in Howard Hawks's classic hard-biled thriller from 1946, taken from the Raymond Chandler novel, often looks like the sleep of reason bringing forth monsters. Only the fiercest concentration will keep you on top of the head spinning plot, and in fact the plot reportedly defeated its stars and director while they were actually shooting, cutting, reshooting, and arguing about it. An explanatory scene was removed and replaced with one showing the leads flirting in a restaurant. Plot transparency was sacrificed in favor of the film's sexual mood music and making its female star, Lauren Bacall, every bit as compelling as she could be. The fact that Hawks moreover had to be relatively coy about the pornography and drugs makes the proceedings look even more occult and mysterious. Number 1. Sunset Boulevard. Down and out screenwriter Joe Gillis, played by William Holden, narrates, following the classic flashback and voiceover structure, the events that led to his body appearing floating in a swimming pool. Death and oblivion are fundamental themes here. The inclusion of faces from the silent movie era such as Buster Keaton, Cecil B. DeMille, Hedda Hopper, Eric Von Stroheim, and Gloria Swanson, Norma Desmond, is a great way to remind audiences about the fleeting nature of fame. Along with co-writers Charles Brackett and D.M. Marshman, Billy Wilder penned an Oscar-winning screenplay that redirects traditional film noir codes towards drama. This memorable hybrid both critiques and pays homage to the early days of Hollywood and its cruel treatment of aging stars. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.